Good evening, YouTubers. It's me, Johnny. I want to make a short video on some things that are going on here in Central America and, of course, in Mexico, too. But also, too, I would say this is going to be true of most of Latin America. I just came back from one of my favorite places to eat Chinese food in uh, Shela here. And just for you viewers who don't know, it used to be basically 20Q to get... Uh, chicken fried rice and yes that's my favorite food ever since i was a kid i eat chicken fried rice anyways chicken fried rice is now 25 which is about a 25 percent increase now that's not a big deal in the whole scheme of things but what i would say is as more and more expats leave the united states and europe and come to mexico central america and south america that's slowly pushing rents up for a lot of stuff also too with countries inflating their money supplies and also two countries doing various things has caused a lot of chaos in the market. So there's a lot of market disruptions causing prices to go up and also prices are going up just in addition to the, you know, the increase in the money supply would be my opinion. But also too, a lot of prices are going up just from the market disruptions, which aren't necessarily caused from, from the Fed or, or various central banks raising or increasing the money supply, but also to the disruptions of COVID. Now, as some of this gets worked out, my opinion is a lot of the housing costs will not come back down and a lot of food costs will not come down. Not in the United States or not in Central America, not in South America. But again, that is just Johnny's opinion. I'm bringing all this up because as things start, as things start to get really bad in Europe, in the United States, as far as loss of liberty and freedoms, then you combine that with rising inflation and cost of living. Now, my view in the next six months, the rate of inflation is going to slow down. But these high costs of housing and rent and food will not come down. But the rate of increase will slow down. So like my understanding from the number I saw across the states, rents are up 17%. Now, where my family lives in the southwest is closer to 20%. Now, having said that, talking to some speculators in the in the states some real estate speculators their view is next next year rents won't go up as much probably only five percent but if you take a 20 percent increase and then you add another five percent that's 25 percent it's not coming down so then after six months or when we get up to the next six months i figure the fed's probably not going to tape and probably not going to raise interest rates but if they do that's going to cause the economy slow down even more, which will cause more money printing, which will just feed the inflation six months to 18 months, excuse me, down the road, you know, next year and the year after that. Anyways, I'm bringing all this up because this is all very chaotic. These rates of inflation in the U.S. Now, I heard in Europe they're claiming there's no inflation in Europe, but my understanding from the rate of inflation in Europe, by that I mean the cost of the things that people actually consume in Europe have gone up a lot, just like they have in the States. But as lockdowns continue in some of these European countries, and as people speculate that they might continue, they're going to want to leave and get out, and they're going to want to go to low-cost parts of the world, like parts of the United States, parts of the of Canada, parts of, of Latin America. I would just use the term all the Americas. My opinion is Europeans and Asians generally go to the Americas. They go to Canada, they go to the United States. They go to Mexico, they go to Peru, they go to Brazil. So that's what I see happening. Now, of course, anyone can go wherever the hell they want. But as people start to figure out that their home countries are going to start taxing them more, their cost of living is going up so high, they can't afford to live there, they're just leaving. Now, some of the evidence of that, you probably ask them, well, what's your evidence? Well, some of my friends teach English to the wealthier people of, of Latin America. And they're getting more and more students, like usually the kids of doctors and lawyers and accountants, bankers, that kind of thing, to bone up on their English before they immigrate to Canada or the United States. That's one indication. Another is some of the channels I follow where I see a lot of Europeans, but some of the channels I watch per pertain more to Americans, Europeans, but it's still a, a good mix of Europeans and Americans wanting to go to Mexico. And a lot of the, a lot of the, Americans want to go to Merida because it's considered to be the safe part of Mexico. Now, I'm not saying it's safe or unsafe. I, I haven't been there. I did. I was in the region of 
Chateau Mall, which I did really like and I did enjoy. And I would say it's very safe. It's also very hot. I'd also say if you're looking for really cheap housing, you're going to find it there. The only downside is the, um, well, the tropical storms and the heat in the summer. That's really the only downside. Oh, another downside is if you live way on the 6th, the internet can be kind of slow. But for most foreigners, it, in my opinion, it doesn't really, they don't need high speed internet. But for some people, maybe that's something they actually do need. But that could be a downside. Another downside is in Chateau Mall and that area in Cancun, you have the Cancun International Airport, but that's really the only airport you have. And it can be cheap to fly to there to Europe or the States. So it just depends where you're going. But it's a weird part. It's in a part of the Mexico where it's hard to get to other places really fast unless you can fly out of Cancun Airport to, to other parts of Mexico to fly out to Europe or wherever, Central or South America. To me, that's really the only downside. I would also point out Mexico, like Central America, there's so many cheap places to, to rent if, if that's what you're interested in. Um, you kind of have to pick the climate you like, kind of the culture you like. Like the further south you get into Mexico, there's more indigenous culture. The further north you are, you're more of a of a European culture. So there's that. Excuse me. Also, too, I want to point out as more and more foreigners flood into Mexico, I can't say for sure, but I, I'm guessing they're going to flood in more to Mexico than, say, Central America, like Guatemala or Panama or Costa Rica. Now, I'm aware of quite a few people who want to go to Costa Rica, but because of what Costa Rica, and, and I'm not sure what Panama is doing, but because some of these COVID rules aren't set in stone yet, a lot of Americans, Europeans are hesitant to go there right now. So I don't know. I think they're just going to go into Mexico, live, work, and play, see how this all plays out in the long run. But there is a hardcore fanatic group of people who really do like Costa Rica. So it could be Costa Rica changes their policies and starts opening up again. I hope they do for their sake. Now, Costa Rica it really isn't on my itinerary, so I don't comment on it. I don't comment on it much. As I said in previous years, I'm more interested in Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, um, maybe Nic Nicaragua. Nomad Coplos has talked about it recently. There's a lot of Americans going to uh, Nicaragua, and I, I can really understand why. Now, when you get into certain parts of the beach areas of Central America, it can be kind of expensive to get housing because there's so many gringos rushing into El Salvador, Panama, and Costa Rica. Now, there was kind of a lull where prices were kind of low, but now they're kind of trending back up. So that's kind of what I'm trying to point out to people. Like, expect rising prices over time. So if you can get your earnings in dollars or, or hard currency, you'll, you'll be better off for it. But there's still a tremendous amount of... of cheap housing available, but it's not going to be of the highest quality. I've seen quite quite a few people, not quite a few, I've seen some people comment on some of these really small you studio, studio apartments or really small places live how they're not really what they're looking about, but they're fairly affordable. And what they're looking for, for like four or 500, they can't really afford. So there's a little gap there. But if you can readjust to that and you're willing to put in some sweat equity or hire someone to clean up one of these places, so it's spotless, so when you move in, you can just move in and move your stuff in. You could do that, but you will have to be, I personally think you're going to have to be flexible if you want a lower cost of living because because a lot of the cheap places are filling up and they're not they're not for rent as much, so rent is starting to go up. I've noticed that too in a lot of the beach resorts here around here. That, now, I know it's close to Christmas, so prices are going up because of that too, but there's just a lot more people coming and staying, so a lot of these beach areas and resort areas, the prices are going up. So if you do want to live in those areas, you'll have to move out to the outer limits, which in some cases may or may not be safe. I don't know. I don't live on the beach, but if you do like beach living, that's why I always, my go-to my go -to place always in Mexico is, uh, I mean, my go-to place for beaches is always in Mexico, or if you have to go to Costa Rica or Panama. It's just Panama and Costa Rica are getting more and more expensive. And even though Costa Rica and Panama might be doing things to discourage people from going there, I still think there's going to be a flood of people going there because they don't want to live in Europe anymore. They don't want to live in North America. And if you kind of want to have the last vestiges of freedom and liberty, you have to decide what part of, what part of the Americas you like 
or you could always go to Africa or Eastern or the Middle East or Asia. I was looking into Cambodia and I thought I could get a business visa, but apparently I can't get one yet. So what will Asia do? I don't know, but I, I suppose in six months we'll see maybe things opening back up. But what I kind of see happening is more and more countries are going to have it. So you're going to have to be fairly wealthy to legally, let me just stress the point, legally live in these countries. They're going to set the bar really high to really attract the affluent traveler and expat. And they're going to put lower, they're going to try to lower the bar or keep people out who are, who are more budget travelers like me. So getting like, you know, a, a legal residency is just going to get harder and harder, like I keep saying in my videos. So if that is on your list, you should, in my opinion, try to get one. And I do think having a legal residency somewhere is a good idea, mainly because of the way the United States and the EU are going to change their tax net. So if you don't have a legal residency, you're going to, you're going to continually pay high taxes whether you like it or not. It will be harder and harder for you to avoid that tax net unless you play ball with, with them and have a legal residency somewhere. And the bar for that's going to keep going up because, you know, supply and demand, you know. Let me think. Not much else going on out here. You're starting to see a few tourists kind of come here. I haven't seen too many. Used to be most of the places I go to be full up with tourists. Like I said, it's Christmas time. There's barely anyone here. And that's another thing, you know, even though there's not a lot of people here, there's still a lot of rising prices. So I just want to kind of, people need to bear that in mind that you'll need to have some emergency reserves, in my opinion, and have a dollar-based or euro-based income if you're going to, if you're looking to live down in, down here for a while. Yeah, I think that's it for now. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and have a good weekend wherever you are.